having a last name closer to the end of the alphabet, I always hated growing up when we had to do things in alphabetical order. For example, you're in school and like, all right, it's time to line up alphabetical order. Yay, I get to be at the end again. I'm so excited. So I always appreciated hearing from Jesus when he says, some who are last will be first. Some that are first will be last. Of course, the reality has nothing to do with last names lining up. But rather, if we think about, you know, what does it mean to be first in the eyes of the world? You know, someone who gets ahead, who is successful in their career or, or seemingly from the outside, have everything perfect within their family. Externally, they seem to have it all. The best car, the biggest house, perfect health, financial ease, or perhaps somebody who's uh, made a name for themselves. They have prestige or power. They're honored or recognized by all. These are the ones that we might be tempted to compare ourselves to. Certainly, those are the ones that are first. And if I don't have those things, I'm last. But, Jesus says, some that are last will be first, and some that are first will be last. See, all these criteria, money, possessions, power, a perfect life, these are not what's important. They might be part of getting ahead here on earth, but they have pretty much nothing to do with being first eternally. Those that are last in the eyes of the world may be the ones who are more easily able to reach heaven, while those who focus all their time on trying to be first in the eyes of the world may find themselves unready to meet the Lord, last in the eyes of God. And this comes up within the context of a question that's asked of Jesus. Lord, will only a few people be saved? And you might notice he doesn't really directly answer that question, since it's really not profitable for us to speculate on exactly how many people are going to reach heaven. But rather, to focus on what we really need to know, how to enter into salvation, and that it is quite urgent for us to strive to do so right now. Before, as Jesus uses an image here, the Master closes the door. Strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. It's a pretty sobering thought. That many will attempt to enter, but some may not be strong enough to do so. Today, there's you know, many that can be under the delusion that heaven is a, is a sure thing, that it really doesn't matter the way we live, it, you know, God won't reject anybody. We're all going to make it there. But Jesus tells us that the way is narrow. The way is narrow. And the way that we live now affects us for all eternity. Either we will hear, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me. Those horrible words. Or, instead, we might receive an invitation. Recline at the table in the kingdom of God. And great effort is required for us to make it through that narrow path to reach heaven. And there's an urgency to take advantage of our moments now to prepare us and move us along that path. Because that narrow door, Jesus says, won't remain open indefinitely. And as I've mentioned before, recently I've been looking at St. Francis de Sales' Introduction to the Devout Life, a book that's meant for us all. And in there, he has a, a number of meditations to assist us in contemplating the things of God. For example, you know, what is our purpose in life, the kinds of blessings that God has given us, final judgment, as well as heaven and hell. And the very last meditations apply especially to what Jesus is asking us to consider today. In those last meditations, we are faced with making a choice, a deliberate choice to choose heaven, as well as a choice to choose now 
to do what we must to reach it. So St. Francis says in there, he says, Be aware that in reality, you are between heaven and hell. The one or the other is open to receive you according to the choice that you make. So every choice that we have here on earth can lead us one way or the other. He says that even though those are both our options, God, He desires very earnestly for you to choose heaven. He doesn't desire any of us to choose a life apart from Him. So to help us to choose heaven, St. Francis in his meditations has us contemplate what those paths look like. What are the fruits of living along the path away from God? He says, look that direction toward, toward the devil. He says, look at the attitude of all the wretched courtiers of this abominable king. See some furious with hatred, envy, and anger. Others killing one another. Others worn out, preoccupied, and anxious with gathering wealth. Others obsessed with worthless things, without any kind of pleasure but that which is useless and unsatisfying. Others dishonest, depraved, corrupted. See how they are without rest, without order. See how they despise one another, and how they pretend to love one another. Those that live that kind of way interiorly are sometimes seen as being first by the world. But in reality, doesn't that describe the very last thing that we would want? So then he has us look the other direction, look toward Jesus Christ, and contemplate the beauty of his kingdom. How beautiful the sight of the assembly of virgins, men and women, whiter than the lily, the gathering of widows, full of holy self-denial and humility, the group of numerous married persons who live together with such gentleness and mutual respect, which cannot exist without a great charity. You will see that their behavior is holy, gentle, and friendly. They listen to our Lord and, and want to plant Him at the center of their heart. They rejoice with a joy that is courteous. They love one another with a love that is holy and most pure. Those among them that suffer distress are not too upset and do not lose their composure. Many of those who live that way interiorly are seen by the world as being the very last. But does that not describe the very first things that we want for ourselves? So St. Francis says, let us choose now, each day. Am I going to deliberately live so as to reach heaven? Or meander unthinkingly along a path that could possibly lead to destruction. At the end of those meditations, he expresses this choice. Worldlings, never will you find me under your flag. I give up forever your follies and trivialities. King of pride, king of misery, infernal spirit, I reject you and your worthless show. I detest you and all your works. To you I turn, my loving Jesus, King of happiness and eternal glory. I cling to you with all the powers of my spirit. I adore you with all my heart. I choose you to be my King now and forever. I am determined to be always faithful to you, and I surrender myself to you forever. <laughs>